Hello my friends, welcome to today's video. I'm Jeanette with Beeble Vintage Designs. In today's video, I wanted to do a recap on the year 2022 and share with you some of the products that I discovered or was gifted this year, answer a question that I am very often asked and uh, share this information with you. So one of the first things that I want to talk about is our Facebook group, Vivo Vintage Design Tutorials. I created that group this year so that my YouTube subscribers would have a place to post their versions of the paintings and techniques learned on this channel. And the group has grown. We have such a lovely group of members. If you haven't joined, please consider doing that. That is something that I did this year and I, I'm like, amazed and so thankful at how well it has gone and how it is growing. That was first and foremost. Thank you everyone for your support both here on YouTube and on the Facebook group. I really do appreciate it. It's so much fun to see your versions of the paintings that you've learned on this channel. It's such a pleasure. Now let's get to the photo paper. I usually use Kirkland photo paper, but I was having such trouble finding it this year and someone suggested I try Amazon Basics Glossy Photo Paper. And I was a little skeptical because I've tried many other brands and they don't all work the same. So I did order it. I figured I actually ordered uh, smaller sheets just to give it a try. And I have to tell you, it was fantastic. It actually works as good or if not better than the Kirkland photo paper and it's less expensive. Now this paint set that I am showing you here is by Schmenka. I hope I'm pronouncing that right and these are watercolor paints. I had them on my wish list forever but I couldn't justify purchasing them. Number one, they're expensive. They're really great quality professional watercolor paints and uh, I have so many. But my fiance bought them for me for my birthday this year and I was so surprised and so thankful. And this here is a set of Winsor & Newton Kalinsky, I believe that's how you pronounce it, sable brushes. These two were on my wish list, but because I have so many brushes, I couldn't justify spending that much money on these brushes. But one day, I got a knock on the door. It was from Amazon and he ordered those brushes and just had them sent to me. And he does that often, which is really sweet. He goes through my wish list and he'll just order something for me and have it delivered to the house for absolutely no reason at all, which is really, really sweet. I'm a lucky woman. Now you can see here, I have a lot of brushes. That's only one of the racks of the brushes that I have. These are for watercolor and I've tried many different brands and um, some of them were really expensive, but my absolute favorite is the silver black velvet brushes. And my daughter gifted me this set of three detail brushes. They're round ranging from zero, two and three size, and they are absolutely fantastic. And you get such a nice fine point I used them to create the texture of the feathers on this cardinal painting, which I recently finished. And I posted pictures and the top question was I, that I was asked was how I achieved that texture. Well, those silver black velvet brushes is how I did it. They have this beautiful fine tip and they give you these very, so, uh, very fine, delicate lines. And that's how I was able to get the feather texture for that painting. Now, I usually use Arsh watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton and I've absolutely loved it. I've heard a lot of artists complain that lately they're having issues with it. Now this pad was purchased uh, at Michael's and they had one of those sales, buy one, get one, or get you know half off the second one. So I bought two of them and I have, uh, a problem. I hoard watercolor paper. So whenever I see it on sale, I buy it whether I need it or not. But that, as I said, that particular pad gave me such trouble because it wasn't staying wet long enough and it just wasn't working like my other blocks and pads. So I decided to try a different brand. And this one here 
is a block. It's by Bao Hung. Bao Hung. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. But it's a block. You stick your palette knife in there to separate the sheet. And it is glued all around the edges so that the paper doesn't warp as much. And you usually don't have to stretch it. And I absolutely loved working on it. I think this may be my favorite paper from here on in. Now this here was something that I purchased this year because I have one of those old style paper cutters with that guillotine blade that you have to hold up and adjust your paper and the blade didn't stay up. So I was always afraid that I was going to lose a finger. So I went on Amazon because I've seen a lot of artists use, artists use this type of paper cutter. And this was really inexpensive. I think it was like 10 or $12. And I liked that it was small. And it's so easy to use. You slip your paper in there, line it up, and you push down on that little orange thing and slice your paper. And this is fantastic for cropping your paintings. This here is a an alcohol blending pen. I bought a set of three and I only recently, <laughs> for this video actually, discovered that they are refillable. If you pull out the nib, you can add a couple of drops of alcohol in there and continue using it. Now I have one that's by Ranger. It was the first one that I purchased, but the nib lost its shape very quickly and it started getting kind of crazy on me. Now you can replace the nib, but I don't want to. <laughs> so I purchased these on Amazon. It came a set of three, very inexpensive. And the nibs, I've had these for a year and the nibs have not lost their shape. It comes with a pointy tip and it comes with a chisel tip. And if you're an alcohol ink artist, these are wonderful to have because you can lift paint with uh, ink with them and you can also clean up edges like you see me doing here. If there's a, an edge that you don't like, you can simply wipe it away with this alcohol blending pen. You can also use these to blend colors together. There's many uses, uses for these. And again, they were very inexpensive, a set of three on Amazon. This was a gift that I received this Christmas from my fiance. Again, he went on my wish list and saw that I wanted more inks. Along with hoarding watercolor paper, I also hoard alcohol inks. And this set of 24, I believe was like 70 or $80. And I was so thrilled when I opened the box and saw all these new inks. I often get asked how I store my ink and this is what I use. These are nail polish holders that I purchased on Amazon. They're not really expensive at all and you do have to put them together but they hold so many bottles of ink and you can see how nice and neat you can keep them. You can line them up according to color and I have about four of these on a shelf next to my desk and it's very easy to see what color you're grabbing and it keeps them nice and neat and I absolutely love these. So if you're looking for a way to store your inks, you might want to consider these nail polish racks. Now this is something you've seen me use a thousand times. These are Pigma Micron pens, but this is a set that my son just gave to me. And I'm so glad because I must have about a hundred of these, but because I use them so often, most of them are running dry. So I was really happy when I opened his gift and saw that it was the uh, Micron pens. Now this set comes with eight different pens. They are archival ink. They are bleed proof, waterproof and they are quick drying. They're good for drawing, um, sketching, illustrations. I like to use them over alcohol ink to doodle or to create some detail. 
And as I mentioned, this set has eight different size nibs and one of them is a brush pen. If you're good at calligraphy, you can use it for that, but you can also achieve all those different size lines with the brush pen alone. And he also gifted me this set of Posca pens. Now, I have a lot of Posca pens and I have many different colors, but black is one of the colors that I use the most. And now the four bottom ones are sizes that I have most often, but there are three different sizes in this set that I have not owned before. And one of them I didn't even know existed. So you can see here, there's a size eight and a size 15 and they are pretty thick. And these are great sizes for um, painting the side of your tiles. If you use tile to create coasters and for your alcohol inks, these are wonderful because you can paint the side of the tile. You know, when you get ink on the side of the tile, because it's not glazed, the tile absorbs the ink. So you want to finish it off by painting the side and Posca pens are perfect for that. Now this is that that particular pen that I'd never seen before. It's a Posca pen brush pen and it actually has bristles. And depending on the amount of pressure you use on it, you can create those thick broad lines or you can just use the tip of it and create those thin lines. I'm really looking forward to using that one. And look at the size of this monster. This is a size 15. It's huge. And this is perfect for my black backgrounds. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I like to use black backgrounds to make my paintings stand out. And I use Posca pens because they give you a very nice, smooth and matte finish. So having that big broad tip will be wonderful for the larger areas. This here is an airbrush gun that was gifted to me by a lifetime friend of mine. And um, it's got a lot of parts that I'll never use because I only use the airbrush gun for the air. And this one is really nice because it has a really comfortable grip. I've not tried it yet, but I'm really looking forward to seeing if it works with my compressor. That was very generous of him because these airbrush guns are pretty expensive. So these are just a couple of paintings that I have left. I wanted to share some of my paintings with you that I did this year that were my favorite, but I sold a lot of them and gifted a lot of them, so I don't have many left. However, I do have this one, and what's special about this one is that it is painted on um, canvas board, and this canvas board was purchased at Dollar Tree for $1.25. Now, if you're using ink on canvas, you know you have to prime the canvas so that it doesn't absorb the ink. And usually I use Kills 2, which is a latex water-based primer. I was out of it. And for this painting, I used semi-gloss interior paint to prime it. And look how beautiful, how beautifully the inks flowed on it once I sealed it with the semi-gloss paint, which I'd never done before. So that was a discovery this year that was really wonderful. And here I am showing you how I, uh, I, I mounted alcohol ink paintings onto cradle board and this was something new for me i've never done this before but framing your paintings can get really expensive so i had happened to come across a video on youtube and i learned how to do it and i i did it and i am so thrilled because it just turns out so beautifully now of course when you're using alcohol ink you do have to resin over it or you should resin over it i happen to like the way it looks and once you're finished with this, it's ready to be hung. You don't need to frame it. And it is protected with the resin and the varnish and the UV protection. But I love the way it looks. You can also mount watercolor paintings onto cradle board. You don't have to seal them. But again, you don't have to spend so much money on frames. Uh, this is a wonderful technique. I did create a series of three videos showing you how to do it. So if you're interested, I'm going to try to remember to link those videos in the description box. 
it is a process especially when you're doing the alcohol inks and you're using the resin so anyway I think that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for all your support this year. I hope that you all have a wonderful and happy, healthy new year. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.